Jerome, thanks so much for taking some time to chat with us here today. Um, I wonder if you can just reflect a little bit on some of the emotions that you felt over the last week or so since the, the death of George Floyd and, and the subsequent protests, all that you've seen and, and witnessed. What, what emotions have you experienced through that? Oh, it's, uh, well, it's been very powerful. It's very, very hard to watch uh, as for, you know, I'm, as you've seen and, and many, many people have seen and uh, around the world, um, the death of George Floyd and uh, the brutal video and, and um, Ahmaud Arbery, all within the last two to three weeks. And uh, the protests are, are huge. You know, to me, they're very, very important and they're very powerful. Um, and, and I hope they do continue and I hope they continue uh, peacefully and the message doesn't uh, uh, get lost and, and um, can translate into some real change in, in our society and also in the States uh, that, that hopefully it spurs uh, uh, people to go out and be passionate uh, voters and get out there and, and, and change uh, uh, what's going on. Um, I think there's obviously uh, a lot more talk here in Canada and in the NHL and, and players and awareness. And I think that's a great thing and, and seeing players speak up. And uh, um, so really, really horrible at it, uh, in, incidents, but uh, hopefully some real positive uh, change can come from it and long term. We've heard in recent days a lot of players speaking up, Jerome, you know, using their social media platforms to get a message out there. In particular, a lot of, of white NHL players have come out and said, you know, listen, we want to learn, we want to listen, we want to understand how we can do better. Um, you know, over 100, I think, at this point, uh, and the number continues to grow. What would your message to be, be to, to those white players who want to try and be part of some positive change and feel like they need to listen, what would your message be to them about what tangible change actually looks like? Well, I think it's great. I think the more positive voices uh, is very important. Um, it is, it's a, a very sensitive subject um, and it's, it's hard to always know what the right thing, um, how to word it, you know, how to word things. And, and I think the most important thing is, is, is where the message is coming from in the heart and trying to um, bring about change and do something positive. And I think that's what, when, you know, I haven't read a ton of the different uh, players, uh, but I have seen them speak up and, and Taze and Crosby and Bergeron and Wheeler. Um, and I think that's great. And I think that's gonna, you know, for awareness and now, you know, for people to keep learning, myself included, and, and, and um, some of the, 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 just have more dialogue. And, and also I think it's gonna be great in dressing rooms. I think in the NHL, um, just for more awareness and, and for people to be more uh, proactive and, 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 and like, you know, not be silent if they hear something that is, is offside or uh, towards uh, black players, but also all players. And, and, and being that uh, the NHL is a, a great game and it's uh, part of what makes it so great is how diverse it is. And, you know, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, you go to a locker room and you, you know, I grew up in St. Albert, uh, just outside Edmonton. Um, you make the NHL and you're, you're playing with people that are, are, are from Russia and Sweden and Finland and many, many different races. Jerome, there seems to be, um, I guess, skepticism would be the word, that the best of intentions that are being stated right now while we're in this moment that we're in, um, that as things maybe resume, that they're tougher to follow through on. And are you seeing things right now that give you confidence that there will be tangible change moving forward and that this isn't just about saying the right thing in the moment? Oh, I think, I, I think that's uh, definitely a fair concern and, and um, it is important. You know, you, you see the protests uh, in the States and across the world and the, the yeah, you want it to, to carry forward and to be some real change. And it's gonna take legislation, it's gonna take uh, voting. It's, 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 it's a big long-term thing, but I do think it's, it is very powerful what's going on and it is important to keep it going. It's not as though this is uh, a new problem w with regard to the NHL. I mean, there have been instances, you know, um, of racial slurs being used that go back a number of years. The most recent was Akeem Aliou. Um, why do you think it's taken this long for this type of momentum to catch on uh, within the players, um, 
because we have seen a lot of these instances, Jerome, over the, you know, a number of years. Um, well, it's, you know, it's something that, um, that's a hard question. It, like I say, my, my experience in the NHL, uh, and my, my growing up as a player, uh, the black player, you know, um, minority, I didn't have, um, you know, in the NHL, I don't have one person, uh, call me, um, the N word, you know, and, and. I didn't have that. That doesn't mean other people didn't. Um, you know, and I played a long time in the NHL. Um, and I felt like my teammates, um, I was always treated the same, you know, and I know that's not always the case. So it's not, it's a, you know, it's, it's more, you know, the more stories I hear, to be honest, are not about the NHL. When, when I've talked to players that I've played with and hear a Kimalu's story, it's about, a lot of it's growing up and, you know, through the system. And, you know, one story is too many to hear. You know, you've, I've definitely heard, as you have, uh, different stories. But um, the NHL, since I broke in, I broke in, you know, say 20 some years ago, they did have, uh, you know, I think they had more of a push. And I was very fortunate to come in at that time because it wasn't always the case in the NHL, especially when you hear there were more racial slurs before. Uh, uh, more fans um, doing things that, that were completely inappropriate. Um, but as far as players, um, since I broke in, the NHL had the, you know, they had an awareness uh, sensitivity training. And I know it's, it, it's, it comes, it can sound like a small thing, but I thought it was actually a big step for the NHL and for us as players, because we'd go to these meetings that we were had to go to, all players had to go to it. And you would discuss, you know, all the things that were, not appropriate at all. One of the stories you tell about your minor hockey was an incident that happened in the stands where something was said towards you that you weren't even aware of and some parents on your team stepped in um, and how much that meant to you. Um, you get the sense that more players will feel more comfortable stepping in, whatever the incident might be, and that that's a big part of the answer is more guys feeling empowered and comfortable to step in no matter what the situation is and, and get involved when things are not okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I think it was uh, very powerful for me as a, as a, a young kid to have, um, to have the backup from my teammates and my teammates, families, and to know that, you know, they had my back. That was huge. That was. And, um, and I'm very thankful for that. And, you know, thank those parents that did do that. And, the, um, but yes, I think that will be absolutely that the, the players uh, in the locker room and uh, they'll be empowered. Uh, they'll feel uh, an obligation, more of an obligation when they, when they've said it. And I think they'll want to, I think that they want to, you know, um, help and uh, the guys that I've seen. And, and uh, I think there'll be lots that really do want to help make the game better make not the game the whole environment when i say the game it's not just the on ice product and everything it's being involved in it being you know the uh the experiences the the travel together the locker room the the dinners you know all the time you spend you know that's all part of the game as a as a player and i think that they will help make uh be more aware of things that that are offside or even even kind of offside you know where before you know a joke and you're there's a guy joking and says it won't be tolerated. I, don't. I think there'll be a lot more people speaking up and I think that'll be a really good thing and, and, and to help steer it away. And, and um, also just more education about what, and, and I think the NHL will continue to work at it and I hope they do. And I believe they will to, to keep helping us, you know, and helping players to um, understand what is uh, <clears throat> allowed and what will not be tolerated. And also to, it's not just about being tolerated. You want to also, embrace that yeah it is a great game and it's made up of so many different nationalities and races and that's part of what makes it great and part of the experience and um to to embrace that as players and also as youth hockey players you know in a dressing room i've said uh you know and it's the same as you're older but also when you're younger we're not all the same and that's a great thing and uh um to you know coaching now with my kids is to try to to get that message across to the kids is to to be a good team, like I said, and, and 
uh, pick each other up. Everyone has a bad day. It'll be your yourself having a bad day sometime, but also to be sensitive to each other and to 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 embrace the the differences and and to you know look for them and enjoy them. And uh, so lots lots in there um, for sure. But I, I really do think that the the protests are very powerful, and I believe in them. And I would hope that they stay peaceful, and I hope that there's meaningful long-term change. You talk about the grassroots level of the game and seeing more diversity, you know, through the grassroots, and that filters up uh, eventually into the National Hockey League. How important is that? And do you see positive steps in that way? Or and can the NHL you know, do even more to try and promote that and, and make that happen? Um, well, the grassroots is, is huge for, for hockey. And I, and I know that since I've broken in, uh, you know, the NHL for a long time is working towards trying to make the, you know, the diversity program and trying to make the game more for everyone and more accessible for everyone. And it does. It's a very expensive game. Um, it is. It's uh, for all families and, and, and black families. It's very expensive. So in order to get more uh, black players and minorities to play early, I think it needs to be more accessible financially for kids. I, I really do. I think that um, in order to get high, high level, you, you know, if, if you're fortunate enough to be near an outdoor rink, get that extra skating, you can make up for it. But if not, the ice time is so expensive, the equipment's so expensive. Um, it's not an easy answer. Um, but I, I, I know they're working at it. There's got to be more ways to to make it more accessible and, and not just to, to make, you know, to have more black players in the NHL, but it's a great game and a ton of fun. And you learn a lot of life lessons in it with being part of a team, um, great memories um, and have more kids and black kids in hockey growing up, enjoying it and loving it just because it's, it's a great thing to be a part of and a great experiences. So yes, long-term to get into the NHL and, and to have more, yeah, that, that's a big part of it, I believe. But I would love to see more kids play, more uh, black kids, more minorities, um, just because it's an unbelievable game to be involved, involved with and teaches so many great lessons. And some of my best friends today are literally are, are from kids I played minor hockey with and minor baseball. And um, I think sports are, are so great in, in so many ways. Well, Jerome, thanks so much for your time. Uh, we really appreciate it, and all the best to you and your family. Thank you, Rich. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. You too.